Hey boys, Norge Life Guy here and welcome back to the channel. What we're looking at today is a part of the R Factor 2 2 Strong Pack, which was the Aston Martin Vantage GTE and the McLaren Senna GTR car, one of which doesn't actually exist. So the McLaren Senna is something where the developers were very nebulous in the way that they described it. They were saying that McLaren came to them saying that if there were a category of hypercar racing that were to be homologated, this may be the car that they would submit for that, you know, somewhere in between GT3 and LMP style racing. Uh, I'm not sure what the, the realistic situation on that is at the moment. I'm not sure how likely this is to become a real car. All I can say is that it's extremely fun to drive, uh, especially across Le Mans. But today we're taking it across the Nürburgring 24 hour endurance circuit. The reason for which being we're doing a mixed grid of GT3 and McLaren cars, uh, McLaren Senna cars. And if this were to start on the, on the very narrow Nordschleife, it would just be an absolute catastrophe. So we, we need the Grand Prix portion of the circuit so we have enough room to overtake and actually get to the front of the field. So I'm actually going to randomize the, uh, the starting grid positions uh, to make sure that things are kind of exciting and horrible for us. There'll be a lot of GT3 traffic that we have to overcome and try and negotiate the perils of the Nordschleife. So I look forward to it and I hope you guys enjoy it. So here we go. All right, so here we are in this very insane mixed grid and I have to wait until we cross the finish line before I can overtake, which should be about there. Got a lot more power than these GT3s. I'm gonna use it to just dive, crash dive on the inside. Gran Turismo Sport, eat your heart out. This is one critical flaw of the R Factor 2 AI is that they, they have no defense against that. And uh, the other critical flaw is that they'll probably smash into me and spin me out while I try and get ahead of the field to meet up with my people, the McLaren Centers. Get the hell out of my way. So this is certainly going to be interesting. Hoping I can make it down to the end. So the funny thing about being on the Nürburgring GP circuit as part of this race is that it reminds me of when Assetto Corsa Competizione first came out. And this was the only track we actually had access to in tandem with a Lamborghini Huracan GT3, I believe. Now, I remember how difficult that was. I would have spent weeks, weeks lapping that one track and car combo because it was more or less my introduction to the whole GT3 thing. I remember thinking to myself like, wow, why does this thing drive like a tank but just spin out like an ice skater? I, I remember feeling very perplexed by the handling model, but I still spent a lot of time playing it. Little did I realize that it just... Oh my Jesus! Little did I realize that it just wasn't very good. Um, and the first thing you can feel playing this game is just the response, the grip levels, uh, how bad you are at driving this insane hypercar. And it's immediately apparent how manic you need to be in order to actually drive this thing in real life. So one of the reasons I'm occasionally losing grip here and quasi spinning uh, is because that aforementioned brake issue that I had in the other video. I've managed to at least get the brake to stop squealing so I don't want to murder it every single time I, I race. But the unfortunate reality is I just don't have the feel in the brake pedal that I need uh, in order to actually brake effectively in a car without ABS. That's the reality for me in the center. Fortunately, it's got traction control to keep me alive in most other circumstances, but not in that one. Let's go flat through here. Flat, flat, flat. Oh my God, all right. Jesus. Oh, wow. what a, what a machine. What a machine. I mean, if this actually becomes a category of race car, I, I can't wait to see it. I think it's gonna breathe some much needed excitement into things is that brake lock again that's one thing I really look forward to is doing that uh, unboxing and test video of the Hussingfell pedals for you guys I my hopes are high my lines are wrong and uh, I'm impressed actually I'm, I'm impressed at how difficult it is to try and race this car at something resembling the limit all the while narrating the experience. 
actually makes me all the more impressed that Jimmy has been doing it for so long. Then again, he cops out and does it in a set of course, so. AC is, AC is something else. AC is for children. Our factor is for children that think they're race drivers. Alright, so, coming through here is where the car really gets to flex its muscles, so to speak. From what I understand, it has somewhere in the range of about 800 brake horsepower. Uh, please correct me if I am wrong. It certainly feels that way when you're in the grid. The amount of aerodynamic and traction control grip is insane. It's a really, really pleasurable car to drive on this track. The main key is to just survive the lap long enough to catch up to the grid in front. So, as you can see, those are my people up ahead. A couple of other McLaren centers at the front of the field. And I'm very curious as to how close we can get to them. Mind you, I don't know what the limit is for this car on this track. I have yet to find it. I hope I don't find it during this video. Ah, oh, what a beautiful car. It just feels amazing. All right, so with the carousel, let's try it. I mean, what are we gonna lose other than our lives? Oh dear lord. Okay, yeah, no, that's pretty much what I expected would happen. Uh, so if you ever find yourself racing in McLaren Center on the Nordschleife, don't, don't take the carousel. Probably pretty, pretty obvious knowledge there. And uh, make sure you have a brake pedal that doesn't suck. But aside from that, uh, a lot of the things that you learn driving GT3s through here do still apply to this thing. It is very much based on a production car chassis, even if that production car may be absolutely insane. Stage 3, yet again, just absolutely crazy. A lot more aerodynamic grip there that I'm used to, especially driving that uh, BMW M2 CS and cars with very little aero, comparatively. So the key here is to just keep it in your pants, as it were. Try to gradually make up time on the guys in front, all the while trying to close in for that final straight, because you're not going to be doing any overtaking here unless you're an absolute maniac. I'm still trying to get the gearing right here. I think it's down to fifth. Curve it around, down to fourth. I think possibly third here, yeah, it would seem to be third. And then third for the mini carousel. Let's see how we handle this one. Almost, almost, almost. Oh, the amazing mechanical grip comes through. All right, if we can stick with these guys for long enough to get them. No, 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 dude, come on, come on, come on, come on. Ah, oh, that's all it takes. That's why I love this track so much. That's literally all it takes for you to lose your shot at overtaking on the final straight. Just a little bit of grass runoff and that's it. I mean, if it had gone any worse, I'd have been in the barrier and it would have been all over. But I mean, that's the Nürburgring Norge life. That's why I love this track. And it's one of the things I came to start respecting about Le Mans as well. It was a track that I traditionally found quite lame, if you will, just flat, straight, not much character, too many, it's like straight chicane, straight turn, like, ah, oh, boring. When you're driving a car with these levels of power on it, comes a bit of a different proposition and it's got the same sort of insane minuscule grass runoff before death that you get on the Nürburgring. Not as bad of course because the Nürburgring is just something else. It's unique in the whole scope of existence. So you know what? Let's do a bonus round. Let's see if on the second lap we can catch our brethren here. As you can tell I don't do the 24 hour layout that much. That turn is still one of my blind spots. Oh man. One thing I do really not like about the AI in this game is that they just, they'll often over brake and they can brake on the limit and in a way that you simply can't. So it's very, very easy to just end up re-rending them. Even when you don't mean to. Because these cars are so damn quick, I generally find that best place to do the overtaking is on the straights. There's so much dirty, dirty air coming from behind the sky that I'm just going to be understeering out everywhere. And on the brakes, got to turn in early because I'll be understeering. 
hoping for the best. So we got first there. He's managed to get himself a bit of a lead. See if we can do this on the outside. Come on, baby. Oh, yes. What a move. I've got to say, the camber, the camber on the track in that area really doesn't agree with this car. You really have to feather it. You're really mindful of the fact that, yes, you are in fact manning 800 horses on a single pedal. Oh, dear God. Don't die. Don't die. Oh. I love it. This is this is wonderful. Uh, if you don't have this, just, just get the McLaren Center or get the, the two strong pack, which will give you the Mar uh, Aston Martin Vantage GTE car as well. I've not tried that yet. I may do it for the next video. If you guys have any suggestions for the next one, please do let me know. Uh, this is pretty exciting stuff. I don't imagine the Vantage will quite get me going as this car has. But yes, if you don't own them, grab the McLaren Senna and make sure to grab the Nürburgring Nordschleife. These two in and of themselves are basically like the equivalent of a full game's worth of content. And there's that dirty arrow again. Trying to keep the brake on the limit and get on the power early. So we're, it's going to be interesting trying to overtake here. You have precious little time to think. And if this class of car ever ends up racing on the north, oof. You can see you're going to annoy me, mate. Oh man, that dirty arrow. I can't, they'd be insane to race these cars here. It just, it wouldn't make any sense. It doesn't. I mean, sure, it's competitive and it's amazing, but there'd be so many accidents. Low fuel, huh? Ah, uh, let's wait. We'll go with it. Much of the gearing, uh, many of the inputs are almost identical to driving a GT3 car. Just, just a little more dire, sort of like if you don't lift there, the death is a lot more imminent. Grip there being really good. And here, if you lock your wheels, you're going to have a very bad time. But I kind of like this. It's almost like practicing the fundamentals of driving just by following a guy, knowing that there's no chance in hell you'll be able to overtake him on anything other than the straights. One thing I find with the AI is on that particular turn with the, uh, the divot on the outside, the AI always takes it better than you do, no matter what. I think that has to do with the AI being on a vastly simplified time model to the player. They can shake off a lot of things like going on the grass, just recover the car and I, I've got to say that as much as I do love this game, the AI is one of its weakest points and it does frustrate me to no end. Like when it does shit like that. Like what, what was that? Like, what even was that? So they'll move in to block you off at the expense of both of your safety and I've had so many crashes come at, at deep into very very long races wondering what the hell that's a new line I like it gain me time there you go boys learning all kinds of new things today I dare not look at the state of my tires because I can feel them through the steering column and it's flat spot mania surprise surprise Gearing through there is a little odd, it's sort of in between gears, I haven't quite gotten it down yet. Oh my, Jesus. Curbs are bad, uh, stay away from curbs in this car, treat it more like an LMP. In case I haven't mentioned already, the AI is cranked up to 100 for this race. Just for the sake of competitiveness and... No, no. Oh, I'm like... R-Factor 2 AI, ladies and gentlemen. So, that's what you run into. <laughs> I mean, what do you say about that, really? Ah. <sighs> 
all I can say is that I am sweating like crazy. I'm not sure what possessed me to wear long sleeves during the Australian summer, but here we are for your amusement. That's a very exciting car to drive on this track. Completely ill suited to each other. Just not something I hope ever happens in real life. But fun to try out all the same. And that's one of the great things about sim racing, isn't it? You can kind of just do whatever, wherever. Hell, you could take go-karts down this thing if you wanted to. Well, I mean, we may finish second, assuming I survive the next few turns. Now, mind you, right? What happened when I crashed into the back of that guy, I took off his rear wing. And this is how quickly he is driving. What, what kind of aerophysics apply to the AI if he can just drive at full speed without a rear wing? I mean, seriously guys, 397, I love you, I love what you do with this game, but you gotta fix this damn AI. It's just a joke. I mean, I would play against other people, or race against other people, assuming that anyone actually raced this game, especially here in Australia. Everyone's all about the iRacing and the GT Sport and the whatnot else, and man, I gotta clear out of this straight away here because people are gonna massacre me. Anyway, that was the race. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, subscribe. There's content like this coming all the time, and I look forward to seeing you guys the next time. And if you have any suggestions on what to cover next, feel free. I'm all ears. All headphones? Anyway, see us.